Well, let me say a wonderful good morning, a pleasant summer morning to all of us. It is indeed a wonderful time again. to come and ask a pertinent question. Are you ready? Are ready or not? <clears throat> ready or not? I don't know why my screen up here is lean. Mm. Something is how to fool. Well, good morning. How are you this morning? How was your week? Just you, um, you were spared from the heat of the time, the global heat. <laughs> global heat. I guess we have to get practice. <laughs> We have to get practicing. Ah, <clears throat> do some practice. Stay in the heat. If you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen. But this kitchen is one that you won't be able to get out of if we are not ready to get out in time. Not ready to get out in time. Okay. <clears throat> um, I see the morning is going wild. The morning is going fast and so Let's see what we can, if we can break bread together this morning, in the name of Jesus. Let us break bread together. Okay. Everything connected there. I know I have an issue with my Zoom, so... Hopefully on one of the times you will get rid of what is happening. Okay, so <coughs> this morning we have a very critical subject, a very timely or time of the end subject. Well, how are we with the world seeing? Are we seeing what's going on? Well, Janet Yellen, hope I say that correctly. <clears throat> I guess she's a financial secretary of the White House Federal. She went well she has gone to China to sort a cushion relationship between the United States and China economically really and so she's there and um as the news report says that anybody who thinks that the China and America relationship is going south, oh, that's not on her list at all. That's not something she wants to, for anybody to say. 
Um, well, we again have to start in Africa. A lot of things are happening in Africa. And um, must pay attention to that. I know when things like billionaire would go down in a um, submersible that will take over the whole media. Submersible, submersible, but some God don't like when his people are being ill-treated, right? God doesn't like, and if you don't think that is biblical, well, go to Solomon. Solomon, one, one of the reasons why Solomon was punished is because he joined with the queen of Sheba, an heathen queen, joined with her, or an African queen, or an Egyptian queen, he joined up with her, and as a result of joining up, you know how that came about, right? I don't have to tell you. Um, queen of Sheba was, <coughs> was gra grabbed by what she heard of Solomon and his wisdom. Where did he get that wisdom? You remember where? Only God <coughs> could give him that wisdom and declare him the wisest man. <coughs> we have a song that says Solomon was the wisest man, but he never knew the secret of a woman. <laughs> uh, and that's, that's one thing we can say. The secret of a woman is... You have to be skillful to know that. You have to be really wise. As a woman, queen of Sheba. Yeah, well, back to the point. He, uh, as a result of that relationship that Solomon had with the queen of Sheba, it caused him take advantage or to ill-treat by way of taxation the common people, the people whom he got the wisdom to lead and to guide Israel as a result of a heathen queen, Solomon, He treated the people of God by way of taxation. As that is one of his main downfall. It's not so much the 900 concubine and the 700 wives and all that. Not so much that. It's because God looks, take note of what you as a leader are doing, whether you are a church leader, whether you are a <clears throat> political leader, whether you are a teacher, anyone that is in charge of God's people, he takes that seriously, the way you treat those people whom you are to be representing them to, <clears throat> represent, be an ambassador for God <clears throat> for those people. Ah, you don't think, don't think that is funny. God takes it seriously when we don't treat the people we are serving, remember, we are serving, serving with dignity, all right, and in godliness. May God help us 
May God help us. And um, a boss, whatever you serve, you are the boss of the people, they call it, take advantage of that. That is cru crucial to God. And that segue me right now to pray. Pray for us, pray for ourselves. And pray that God will instill in us the importance of taking care of people. And I'll come back to a couple news clips and then we look at something. Yes, time is moving. It's a get ready time, so <clears throat> we're going to look. Um, well, I have Isaiah in front of me, so why not look on Isaiah for a moment? Oh, come, let us bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Our kind, loving, and most compassionate Father, instill and infuse us with the truth this morning of the Holy Spirit. May we live better than we came. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, I also heard a very bizarre news report coming out of uh, I don't remember if it's Kenya, but it's Africa, somewhere there. Sometimes I hear the name, but I just say Africa because whichever, whichever um, town or city or, or county, whatever it is, uh, or state, state of Africa, I heard a bizarre news report. That I never heard before. <coughs> uh, this is another sip of uh, herbs. I have so cool me down that I had already. I had some of this coconut water, and I have a bottle of lemon water. So you know need to get the fluid, get the water in. Uh, if you can get coconut water, the electrolytes in, and the herbs to the healing of the nation. Mm. Hickory, hickory. Check out that one. It has a little bitterish, bitterish taste, but it's all right. It's not nothing of such. Yes, what was the bizarre news that I heard coming out of Africa? And I was stunned, really, to know that things like these are real. You know what that news is? Well, the news clip is about, I hope I'm saying it right, menstrual shame. The women of their period. You hear me now? Girls in schools, women in parliament, whoever. You no know, women will have their period, monthly period. I don't know if because <clears throat> June, just last month, we had a whole month of women's health. And we have some great women who 
great sisters of Zion who came forth and really <coughs> explain and share their personal experiences and also research and share with us to help women to understand their bodies and and keep it prospering in health. <clears throat> so, because of that, I think this news grabbed me so much. And I am telling you, because some of you might be used to hearing that, but again, it is called menstrual shame, or period shame, one of those. And what that means is that they, in this particular case, they found a bloody rug or bloody towel in some bin. <laughs> Hear me now, people. Um, this can't be any, any more backward than I can think of. They found a, a towel in a bin. And as a result, they took it out, or they, whatever they did, but they searched every woman in that area, whether it was a school or that. And here it gets really dark to me. <clears throat> They'll have to, because they could not find the woman, who was having her period, they went ahead and stripped down every one of these women naked to see, oh my word, to see if a sister was having her period. Is that for real? I heard it over um, NPR news and I know like you do that NPR just tell it as it is <clears throat> brothers and sisters is that really happening in Africa <clears throat> or wherever else because if it's happening there, who to tell where else it is happening? No, man, no, sir, no, sir. You mean so low? Strip the woman in the public and call it menstrual shame or period shame to say they shouldn't be there or something, they, they should <clears throat> be more uh, alert to that and <clears throat> all that sort of thing. I don't know how you take that, but I take it really, really sad. Take it really, really sad. So, all I can say is ghost darkness cover the people. And God is endeavoring to release us, to bring us in the light <coughs> of his glory, the light of his righteousness. God is covering us, our filthy rags, with his righteousness. Yes, he didn't strip us in the public to show all the corruption that we have, right? He covers us with his robe of righteousness. But you're going to take a woman and strip her, strip her in, in, naked in uh, public, searching to see if she's having her period. That's what 
and you research it on NPR or one of those stations. NPR or, or the other one. <clears throat> I think it's two. God covers us. Our sinfulness, our corruption, our dirt, our stink, our rottenness. God covers us, but we are going to strip people. To shame them. Did God shame you? I covered your sins. Tell me. Is God shaming any of you? Culture. Tribes. Get out in the light of the word of God. And rub your eyes with eyes salve so you can see. It is full time. It is full time. In the name of Jesus. Let's look at Isaiah. <clears throat> I love Isaiah because Isaiah is one of those prophets that was sawed in two. Ah, oh, yes. Isaiah was one of those prophets that was sawn in two. Um, so let's look at Isaiah for a moment. <coughs> Greetings, happy Sabbath, ready or not. Ready or not. Here we come. Isaiah chapter 8 <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 8 let's see oh. I guess I can take this one out let's just look at something here All right. Let us turn to Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah 8 verses 1 through 4. I read in your hearing. Moreover, the Lord said unto me, Take thee a great roll and write in it with a man's pen concerning my her shall as husband. And I took unto me faithful witnesses to record you are the priest and Zachariah the son of Jeberishchi. And I went unto the prophetess and she conceived and bare a son then said the Lord unto me, Call his name Mahershala's husband. For before the child shall have knowledge to cry, My father and my mother, the riches of Damascus and the spoil of Samaria shall be taken away before the king of Assyria. Ah. <clears throat> now here the Lord is telling us, and the Bible here tells us that before the child, that is Mahershala's husband, shall have a knowledge to cry my father and my mother, the riches of Damascus, which was the capital of Assyria, not Syria, 
and the spoil of Samaria, the capital of the ten tribes, shall be taken away before the king of Assyria. Well, we have talked about that in chapter 7. So we know that Syria and we know that Israel are symbolic. And we know that Assyria is also symbolic. So these nations of the past, there are some of them that God wants us to know that they have their counterpart in our time, in the latter days. I read to you before that God used his prophets to write. But most of, this, most of what they wrote in olden times, anciently, most of what they wrote was for us, our time, the latter days. And you have that example in Nebuchadnezzar's dream when he dreamt of the kingdoms and the kingdoms were swept away in the latter days. Even in, in, in um, that chapter it tells us clearly about the latter days. Those words are written in Daniel 2. But it says that all those kingdoms, Babylon, Medo, Persia, Greece, and Rome, reach down to our time. So, again, just to reinforce the fact that these are especially Assyria reach down to our time, just like we know Babylon. We have spiritual Babylon and we have physical Babylon. But in the end time we have spiritual in the Middle Ages and we are yet to see Babylon, <coughs> which will be a place, an actual domain, because it will be destroyed with the woman of Revelation. <coughs> so we continue and we have seen how that was fulfilled in the Dark Ages and we know now that modern Assyria is the West or the English-speaking Christian world today or what we refer to as the Protestant nations who broke up the Confederacy. What Confederacy? Well, the Confederacy between the pagans and the unfaithful Christians in the Dark age, Ages period. We talk about that <clears throat> to length, that in the Dark Ages, God's Church, after the leaders died, the original leaders, like the apostles, after they were martyred, the Bible talks about a falling away, and that was a period in which Rome or the pagans were <clears throat> comfortable to go into the church because the leaders dropped their guard. Those leaders who came after the original leader, they just start to do the popular things and <clears throat> as a result the watchmen dropped their guards and as a result a pagan flood entered the church. So that was what we call a confederacy because when they came together they joined forces to fight against the Saints, <clears throat> the Church of God 
which was represented at that time as like people like the wall and see. So God's church is always that little light that is moving. It doesn't matter what. <clears throat> it started from the obedient offering that Abel offered worship, the true worship of Abel, even though he was opposed and killed, become our first martyr. That light continues to burn and we can see the representation of that coming up the line Seth and then all the way to Noah and his family and then it comes to Abraham and coming up. So God's light continues to burn no matter how small that is his church. So when Christ raised up, raised up the Christian church and they were careful not to tolerate sin and sinners, really, <clears throat> because you recognize that when even people commit secret sins, they were found out and they were <clears throat> prevented from staying, remaining in the church, two members and an ass and so far. So, <clears throat> the standard of God's church <clears throat> is always broken down from inside. <clears throat> and then it is broken down inside, then that's when you see the flood of people without any regard to the standard of God will be invited in, really. <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> sip off my hickory there and that is what is happening now so as I started out I said that we have to be careful when we are compromising the truth of God's word. <clears throat> right? We are compromising the truth of the word of God. That is the crucial part. We are not doing justice to the ordinary people, to the laity. So any preacher that knowingly compromising and watering down the standard of the Word of God. You will be dealt with because the Bible tells us clearly what God will do to the unfaithful shepherds over his flock. And that's why I started out with Solomon that his downfall was to Treat God's people poorly because of, you know, keeping up an influence, keeping up <clears throat> that affluence, worldly affluence, worldly standard. Uh, we have to care. And we have to know that. So, the Protestant nations, we know it was the Protestant nations who, as represented through birth, ship, birth, birth here, who broke up the Confederacy in the Middle Ages. Heinz Brinchen comments 
on these verses that we have just read here in Isaiah 8 verse 1 through 4. <clears throat> All the way 34, 35, all the way to 38. Of uh, 14 track it says, <clears throat> Now, okay, where did I put my thing? Okay, looking for a reading or hearing. Having been pre existent with his father, and then having been reborn in Bethlehem, Emmanuel manifestly represents the born again Christians. John 3 3. Whereas never have been pre existent, Mahershala's husbands can only symbolize those not born again, that part of the church membership which cannot be represented by Emmanuel. So what we are looking at now is two classes of people in God's church. One for the uplifting and the holding up of the standard of God on one set to tear down the church. So God is showing us another representation here in these two young men by the name of Emmanuel and Maher Shilatasbas. And of course, I want to tell you that this, this is talking about Emmanuel Light's people, true Christians, and Mahershala Das those in the church, but they don't even know the true God and the true church. A parallel is found in the allegory of Ishmael and Isaac typifying the born after the flesh and the born after the spirit, the non-Christian Jews and the Christian Jew. See Galatians 4, 22, the 31. That's 14 track. Did you get the point? Did you get the lesson there? So Mahershala's husband is different from Emmanuel because Emmanuel represents the born again Christians. Have you been really born again this morning? Let's take an introspective view of ourselves, brothers and sisters. It's critical. So but Mahershala Laspa uh, does not even know his father and his mother, at least not for a while. Continuing now in this book, um, the bottom it says, in the clear focus of these facts, there comes to light the truth that the born-again Christians who lived when ecclesiastical Rome fell and who are represented by Emmanuel. <clears throat> now, ecclesiastical Rome, remember, of course, is papal Rome, papacy. It's another name or expression for papal Rome. Papal Rome or the papacy were a mixture of church and state during the Dark Ages. Brothers and sisters, let us catch up on the lesson of our history um, and the Middle Ages, the Dark Ages, because there are some crucial lessons there for us.
there are some crucial lessons there for us. I'm afraid we don't have much time for you this morning, but just to say that <clears throat> Isaiah 8 brings to bear two classes of folk in the end time, in our churches, in our church. Of course, it is the same as the ten virgins. That's not a representation of the world. That's a representative of God, representation of God's true church at this time in the latter day. And that is critical because the ten virgins, they all have the light of truth. They all have the truth for the hour, brothers and sisters. They have the truth. That's the lamp that keeps them. Or let me take that back. <clears throat> they all have the truth of the word of God. In other words, all that was revealed up to now. But the foolish one said, a representation, care not about the spear oil, which is the present truth, the oil in the vessel. So this is not talking about the world or some false church who reject the law of God and who are classified as Mr. Babylon and the mother of harlots or the daughters of the harlot. No, it's talking about those through whom God is today bringing the light of truth. Because remember last week we looked at the fact that Babylon is fallen because the first time, the first one fallen and then fallen, the first one is a representation of the fact that God was ceasing bringing any light of his word through the Babylonian organization. Yes, because the Reformation, all of them were in the <clears throat> under the papacy, right? So whatever God reveals was true in the domain or in the <clears throat> we could say in Babylon but when we ceased, starting with William Miller, and again last week we say, although they were counted, William Miller, and who followed William Miller? Ellen G. Watt. They were counted as part of the Reformation, but they were look a little more than that. They were much more than the Reformation. Why? Because they had a present truth message that the people had to move on with or be left in darkness. Alright? And so it was. And right now, we are seeing that we have to keep moving with the light. Because if we go to Ezekiel, which is a prediction of, of that of the Reformation, we will see that it's only six grains, six cereals that were in the bowl. And God deals with seven to be complete. So if you see six in the Word of God, take very key note that there's another one. 
and take very key note also that when you see six and not seven, six is telling you that this is incomplete. Incomplete. God sets a standard of seven. And unless you see that, it is not completed. Oh, may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the full fellowship and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest with us and abide with us all. Be anointed, be blessed, be lifted up, be delivered, be healed. Get rid of that pain so that you can focus on the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for standing by. I just, you had something to chew on, to go and review or to look on. It's a ready or not moment. See you in church. God bless you.